Hey, I'm going to share with you the best advice I have as far as getting a teaching job. Create a portfolio. This is a picture of the portfolio I used to earn my first teaching job in 1997. That's right. I actually kept all the documents and they're right here for you to see. Now they're heavily redacted. You can see that, but these are the actual documents I took with me for that teaching interview. So notice at the top, I have a white three ringed binder and it's filled with plastic sleeves. Each plastic sleeve contains a document. And um, when I went into the interview, each of the, each of the plastic sleeves was tabbed so I could turn to the document I wanted to present. Now an organized portfolio is impressive. One that's disorganized is not. So make sure it's tabbed. You can also print out multiple portfolios if you want and get them professionally bound. And if you want to get really cute, you can decorate it. You can decorate the front of the portfolio in school colors. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about what each of the documents are that I had in this portfolio. The first document is a resume. And back in the old days, I actually put a picture on it. There's a picture of a very young Chris Cole. Make sure you have multiple copies of your resume. My first interview had two people in it. I was only expecting one. I've seen interviews where you've had six people uh, conducting the interview. So make sure you always have enough resumes to go around. My recommendation, take eight or 10 and put them in the plastic sleeve. They'll all fit there so that you can pull them out no matter how many people are in the room. So keep that in mind, little pro tip for you. Now, I don't know what happened to my mission statement, but my mission statement is one of the things that got me the job. Make sure you don't have just the philosophy of education, but also a mission statement as well. I tell my students every year my mission statement when I start teaching them, which is to make the world a better place for my children by educating the future of America about the importance of the environment. That's my mission statement and has been for 27, probably 30 years now. So uh, whatever your mission statement is, think about it, put it in there. Same thing, philosophy of education, you're gonna to wanna to put it in there. That helped get me the job. The fact that I came in telling them there's no such thing as a bad kid, just a bored kid, matched up with the assistant principal's philosophy, philosophy of education perfectly. And again, I know that's one of the reasons I got the job. So make sure you put your philosophy of education in there and be prepared to talk about it. If you remember from the video, how I aced the teaching interview, you'll remember that I had zero teaching experience, zero. Even my internship, I didn't do any teaching. I just kind of watched. So I had a deficit and I needed to make up for that because I was going up against 90 other applicants and they all had teaching experience. So what I did is I went back and looked at the projects that I did when I was working on my education degree. And this is one of the projects where I did a good job. And I put it in there to demonstrate that while I didn't have direct teaching experience, I had potential and I could be coached. And that's what I relied on this. It says something to the degree, this is the best secondary unit I've ever seen presented by a prestigious uh, professor. So if you don't have direct teaching experience, print out some of those projects or show papers and have something in there to be able to discuss what you would do, even if you've not already done it. Lesson plans. This is a place where you can stand out. You can show the administration what kind of lesson plans you're going to be turning in. It shows your attention to detail and the type of planning you're going to do. So if you're a veteran teacher, you can actually give them actual lesson plans that you used the year before. If you're a new teacher, make up some lesson plans for a unit that you're gonna teach so that they can see, administration can see what kind of teacher you're going to be and what kind of detail and diligence you put into your lesson plans. The portfolio is a great way to demonstrate your accomplishments and your expertise in your subject matter. On the left, you can see two documents that, um, showing my expertise in pygmy rattlesnake research and my ability to navigate the field as far as safety and diligence go. I spend a lot of time in Florida's outdoors and I actually have documentation from a college professor uh, demonstrating that. So whatever your subject matter is, put whatever accomplishments you have, anything that demonstrates you're an expert that will help you stand out in the interview process. Seems like a no brainer, but if you have a teaching certificate, put it in there, great place to keep it.
Your portfolio is a great place to keep documents as well. I have all of my evaluations going back to my first year of teaching in 1997. Each one is saved in a plastic sleeve inside of my portfolio. So I highly recommend you do that. Also, um, if you're interviewing and you have great evaluations, it's a great way for the assistant principal or principal you're interviewing with to see the feedback from the people you've worked for before. So keep that in mind. If you're a new teacher, save those evaluations and keep them in your portfolio. We have a theme developing. Anything that makes you look good is related to your subject matter, coaching, motivating kids, or teaching is worth putting into your portfolio. This particular uh, document right here is a letter from the superintendent congratulating me on a state championship coaching girls basketball. So again, I have it in my portfolio because it shows that I can lead young people to achieve great things. So anything that makes you look good, whether it's an email, a letter, a document, put it in there. Over the course of your career, you're most likely going to encounter standardized testing. If you have standardized test results, you might want to save them in your portfolio, especially if they're good. This particular document right here is showing what percentage of my students received college credit. They did an absolutely fantastic job and beat the national average. Again, so I put it in there. News articles, if you're in the paper, put it in there. Um, I have a few articles from the paper, but I'm worried about copyright and all of that. So what I'm printing out here is a school newspaper. My students accomplished something nice. It was a telephone uh, book drive. They did a good job. They got a shout out, so I put it in there. So a lot of people don't think about the school newspaper. If you get a shout out in the school newspaper or your students, save those articles in your portfolio where you're gonna keep all your stuff and put it in there. Anything that makes you look good and should, demonstrates what kind of teacher you are. Last but definitely not least, we're gonna call it miscellaneous. This one's really cool. In 2001, I actually pulled the permit on some alligator eggs and we hatched five alligator eggs in the classroom. We can do that here in Florida. There's certain organizations we can partner with to actually hatch alligators in classrooms. You just have to pull the permit and know what you're doing. I've also done gopher tortoises. And um, basically what this demonstrates to an assistant principal or a principal I'm interviewing with is I think outside the box, I make learning relevance. I find cool, interesting things that are hands-on for the students to learn. So I want to demonstrate that. And this uh, letter right here demonstrates it along with I've went on a gopher tortoise permit and a few other things. So the moral of the story is this. Anything that makes you stand out, anything that shows what kind of teacher you are, anything that shows your philosophy of teaching, um, any accomplishments that are relevant to teaching, coaching, your subject matter, or leading kids, all of those things are relevant. We're all gonna have very, very different portfolios, but your portfolio is gonna be awesome because it's about you. So find those things that will show who you are. If you don't have relevant teaching experience, show them what you're going to do instead. Uh, plan it out. My first job, I got it because I planned the whole course out and showed them what it was going to be. You're awesome, keep that in mind, and. Have your portfolio demonstrate how awesome you are. If you uh, have any questions or want any ideas, feel free to drop some comments in the comments section below. Happy to help out and maybe come, help you come up with some ideas. If you liked this video or learned anything from it, please hit the like button. Possibly think about subscribing. I'm gonna be producing these all year. Most of them from here on out will be teaching tips and classroom management tips. Um, thank you for your time. It's very nice spending this time with you. Colster out.